amazing you hope you're doing well welcome to chat hour if you're stopping by for the first time welcome and thank you and if you are returning welcome and thank you you already know you are the real mvp you're like sweet grains of jollof rice in my bowl i mean niger jollof rice so that they used wood to cook a sweet die <laughs> <laughs> if you like what you see, do well to click the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and hit the like button as well. Thank you. I got a message from someone, and it reads, It has already been seven years, but I can't still get over my ex. I've been with my boyfriend now for three years. What should I do? Hmm. I'll say, if you're not over your ex, and you're dating someone new. Comparison is inevitable. The person you're now dating is in a losing battle. And that's the truth. That's as simple as ABC. I won't even color it. Now, when you've shared part of your life with someone, it's never easy to move on. But hey, it's been seven years, sister. Yeah. Let's talk about some clear signs that you're not over your ex. The very first one is looking back with rose-tinted glasses. Selective memory can creep in after a breakup. When you two were together, you were very aware of all the ways they drove you crazy. Hmm. The bad habits that got on your nerves, the arguments you had, the boring days when you create something more. But as soon as they're gone for good, we can quickly forget. Instead, we roll out the rose-tinted glasses and think of all the good old days. This has a nasty habit of keeping you stuck in the past. Yes. Number two, stalking their social media. Social media makes it way too tempting to check up on an ex. Uh-huh. And when I say check up, I obviously mean spending hours on end silently stalking everything they do and everyone who is connected to them in any tiny way. There is a lot of truth in the saying out of sight is out of mind. Did it feel good to see him out having fun? Huh? Did you enjoy watching her in a reel with some good looking guy you don't know? Answer, probably not. And the fact you're doing it screams that you haven't gotten over them. Yes. Number three, obsessing over the new partner. I'm cutting us all a bit of slack here by saying obsessing because let's face it, a slight curiosity is quite natural. If you're one of those gracious people who are 100% happy for their ex finding new love, then congratulations to you. Congratulations. Having said that, when enough time has passed and if you don't want them anymore, why would you begrudge them finding someone else? Why? Why? The answer, because you're not fully over them yet. Yes. Number four, getting lost in what ifs. What if is a never ending game once you start playing it. Trust me, because there are quite literally endless scenarios you can come up with. Some of your what ifs may include, what if I never meet anyone else? What if that was my one shot at love? What if we were meant to be together? What if I made a mistake letting them go? Ah, what if in the future we find our way back to each other? It's often a side effect of the grief and loss you experienced. But it suggests you're still holding on rather than letting go. Hmm. Yeah. The fifth one trying to bump into them you know they will be at that party and truth be told you wouldn't bother going otherwise but the more casual encounters you can try to orchestrate the better whether it's driving through their neighborhood walking past them of their hangout or checking in with all your mutual friends mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we know that game oh hi fancy seeing you here mm -hmm. The name of the game is close contact, but under the guise of it all being totally accidental. Stop it, brother. Stop it, sister. We know the game. We know it already. We know. <laughs> Let's talk about the sixth one. Posting not so cryptic messages aimed at them. 
There are plenty of ways that our social media posts give the game away that we're not over an X. And that's the truth. Rant about betrayal, memes about forgiveness, quotes about inner peace, you know, experts talking about true love. Mm -hmm. Experts, well done. Wait a man. Wait well on sir. Is it really an innocent coincidence? Or are you trying to send a message? Answer the question. Number seven, drunk dialing. When we've had a few drinks, the truth can come pouring out of us and often in more melodramatic ways. The restraints we manage to show while sober goes out of the window. Before you know it, you have left them seven missed calls to wake up to along with. Are you awake? Sex. Hmm. Are they on your mind whenever you've been drinking? Now, let's talk about the eighth point. Sleeping together. It's a tempting to keep on enjoying a few perks even after your breakup. After all, you've already been there and done that. It's easy and familiar, but it's a pretty dangerous ground. Sure, a few people will be able to hook up with an ex, no strings attached, but the overwhelming majority cannot. Yeah. When feelings are involved, it's hard to separate physical and emotional intimacy. Let's be honest. Number nine, holding on to momentous. You are regularly opening your little box of memories. Maybe it contains prized love possessions such as a random ticket stops from concerts you went to. If it wasn't for the sentiment, most of this will be in the trash. Perhaps you can't help but scroll through old WhatsApp messages dating back to the moment you first met. You are still swiping through countless photos of the times you shared together. Frequent trips down memory lane imply you wish it wasn't just a memory. Number 10, talking about them way more than you know you probably should. If they were being honest, your friends are probably tired of hearing about it. They listened intently during the post breakup dissection. They were happy to let you cry on their shoulders for as long as it took. But now you, my sister, my brother, are shoehorning them into most conversations. Stop it. When someone is constantly on our minds, that is bound to filter through. No matter how much you try, their name remains on your lips. If you ask, how can I get over my ex? Getting over your ex takes time, which can be weeks, months, or sometimes even more. However, some helpful approaches can make this transition easier. Allow yourself to grieve, okay? Practice self-care. Cut off contact with your ex. Reflect and learn. Set new goals. Seek support, okay? Healing from a breakup can vary for each individual. However, focusing on self-care and talking to your loved ones can help overcome your past relationship. In a nutshell, the aim of making this video isn't to get you depressed or make you feel bad for not being over your ex. No. However, now that you can see that you're still a bit hung up on them, you need to take steps to facilitate your healing, okay? Conscious practice of self-love will play a pivotal role in helping you get back on your feet. Also, cut yourself some slack and take all the time you need to get better. If you think it's necessary, you may need to see a therapist to help you sort through your emotions. All right. Yes. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope this video has been helpful. Kindly leave your thoughts in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed, please do not hesitate to hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and kindly click on the like button to give me a big thumbs up. I'll see you soon, God willing. Till then, let the conversation continue.